Here's a drawing pin. Now, if I drop this from a particular height onto a tabletop, will it land pin down or pin up? Now, this is a classic experiment uh, that's done in schools, okay? And it is a worthwhile investigation into experimental probability or otherwise referred to as relative frequency, okay? Now, the thing is, it's also a good, uh, prep a good piece of work as preparatory work in order to get you thinking about setting up a fair experiment and so dropping the pin from the same height each time, uh, landing the pin on the same material each time. Um, so if you landed it on a table or landed it on carpet, maybe you would get different results. And the whole idea is that we don't know how often this should land point up or point down. Okay, So there are two possibilities that we can consider. Either it's point up, okay, like so, or it lands on its side. And so we would deem that as point down. Okay, like so. Now, how often should it land point up versus point down? Okay, so what we could do is we could drop the pin 10 times. Okay, so we could have a number of trials. Row. So let's say we drop the pin 10 times and we're going to count how many times it lands point up. So we're going to count that as a success. Okay, so point up. So let's say that out of the 10 times, I've found that it's landed point up five times. Now, from that, I can then calculate a relative frequency or an experimental probability. So the relative frequency would be the number of times it's uh, appeared as point up divided by the number of trials. 5 divided by 10, and so that would be just 0.5. Okay. Now, what we would then do is we'd decide, well, is that enough trials? Has that told the whole story? Well, maybe it hasn't. Maybe I go on and do another 10 trials. So now I've done 20 trials. And overall, it has now been point up 12 times. So I've counted that they're out of the 20 trials, 12 times it's been point up. And so 12 divided by 20 is 0.6. So you can see that the relative frequency is changing. Now, is 20 trials enough? Well, maybe it's not, OK? And what I would do is I would keep going. I would keep calculating number of trials, point up, and relative frequency. And then maybe I would end up with having done a thousand trials and of those th those thousand trials I have recorded that 567 of them were point up and so the probability is 567 divided by a thousand or 0 0.567 and as this goes along what I can do is I can record it in a table so I could have number of trials as the vertical axis. Oh, sorry, not number of trials as the vertical axis. Let me get this right. The relative frequency, apologies, is the vertical axis, because I know that's going between 0 and 1. And the number of trials is the horizontal axis.
And what you may see is as you plot this, that after uh, 10 trials, we had it at 0 0.5, so it started there. And maybe what it does is it goes in a zigzag fashion. And what you should find is that eventually the zigzags get closer and closer and closer together, hopefully, as you go further and further and further along, increasing the number of trials. And effectively, that probability that you're homing in on is the experimental probability. So this is how uh, the probability of something occurring is calculated when it's not just a flipping the coin or rolling a dice, or rolling a die, when you don't know what that probability should actually be. You must do experiments and many, many experiments in order to get to a point where you are confident that that is close to the experimental probability, to the actual probability, okay? And that's how we can calculate it.